Hello and welcome to the live orienteering coverage of the 2018 European Orienteering Championships coming to you from the region of Ticino in Switzerland. My name is Catherine Betts and I'm joined by Ines Mertz in Tesserete for the mixed sprint relay. We've got 21 teams lining up for today's race which takes place on the beautiful hillside here through some narrow cobbled passageways and on the side of a rather steep hill as well. The weather conditions, it's 20 degrees here, much like the rest of the week. We have had a shower pass through in the last half an hour or so, and the ground is slowly drying out in the, well, quite quickly drying out in the sunshine. So hopefully by the time the athletes get going, it will be dry underfoot. And there's been the Swiss uh, championships here earlier today. So there's lots and lots of spectators have stayed after their own races to help cheer on the teams today and well Switzerland are the favorites but more of that later this is uh, the views that the athletes will be seeing when they come into the arena here in this this parkland area of the map and uh, we, they've all just been introduced to the crowd one by one each team here they are at the moment the Czech team being introduced and they will start with in the order that they finished the, um, in the European Championships two years ago and of course that's the uh, Swiss team uh, number three being introduced to the crowd and it is a pretty beautiful hillside. Now the athletes um, were given a, a big area of the map that was embargoed so they're not exactly sure what's going on but let's as we see some pictures of the athletes warming up on the track out there let's talk about some of the favorites who do we expect to be doing well in uh, the course today Jonas yeah of course the, we have the usual suspects uh, team Switzerland I think is very strong we have uh, Judith Wieder, Florian Howald, Martin Hopman and Elena Rose very very strong team and uh, of course the Swedish team I think is very strong as well, even if they are without Tove Alexandersson on uh, the first leg. Yeah, uh, she injured herself in the middle distance yesterday. Exactly, instead of her we will see Lina Strand in the team there. And, uh, but still a very strong team. Lina Strand, Emil Svensk, Jonas Leandersson and Karlin Olsson. And then of course every sprint relay Denmark is very strong. Um, but this time maybe not the biggest favourites uh, as they were other years or other competitions. And then I think also um, team, the team from the Czech Republic looks quite strong with uh, Denisa Kosova, Milos Nykatum, Wojtek Kral and uh, Jana Knapova. And then also the Norwegian team with uh, Sigrid Alexandersen, uh, Trond Einar, Moen Pedersli, Øystein Kval Österbø on third and Andrine Benjaminsen on fourth. That's, uh, I think, the teams uh, I believe in, and I'm sure you have the <laughs> British team on your list as well. Yeah, I think they will, um, looking at, at the teams on the list, they'll fancy their chances at doing well um, today. Of course, with Chris Jones getting a bronze medal, that's like boosted the team. But um, as, as we know on sprint relays, absolutely anything can happen. And we've seen um, both uh, Sweden and Norway are quite far down the rankings on, on the starts today. That's because they both were disqualified. They both had runners that mispunched two years ago. And we, if you remember back to the World Cup final also in Switzerland in Grindelwald at the end of last season, we saw the first um, Swedish team and the first Swiss, Swiss team both get disqualified. So we were talking about the second teams of both of those nations. I mean, here there's only one team per nation, which makes it a little bit uh, easier to understand and to commentate on because you're not thinking about which Swiss athlete is coming down the hill. Um, but I think certainly uh, the two favourites I think of today's race are definitely Switzerland and um, Sweden possibly next. Those, those would be the ones we're looking to take the top two spots if nothing goes wrong. And then uh, I think there will be quite a battle for the bronze medal for third spot. But this is the course, Jonas. Yes, we have the course here and uh, we see all the possibilities. So we see in red, we see the women's course and in uh, violet, we see the men's course and uh, the four kings there as well. So in the beginning, it's uh, it's quite flat out from the start and then from the third to the fourth control, it's about 50 meters to climb. So that's a tough one. And I think uh, 
some of them will get quite tired there because it's quite easy to execute the root choice, but you have to push very hard. And then you will actually, after this fourth control, we will continue climbing uh, another like 25 meters. And then you get into this very, very narrow part. Um, that's a really old, small town or like place there, and it's very narrow. And I think if it's still a bit wet on the floor, it doesn't look like that. It could have been very slippery and very tight. Um, but then you're, you, you're tired from the uphill, and then you have to change your technique and like adapt to this very narrow part and th that will be the difficulty there and then you go back and you have some route choices again down the hill very fast running there and uh, you will come back to the arena and then the men's course will continue here uh, with a small additional loop which uh, the women don't have on the first and, and on the fourth leg and then it's just from the 14th control, it's just a very easy and a very short last loop here. And it's very... I, d uh, I think it's mostly for the spectators because <laughs> there's no challenge in technique at all there. No, it's, it should be very, very easy in the last bit, but it is absolutely packed with spectators. So we ran the course just uh, about uh, just over an hour ago. What did you make of it as a whole? Yeah, it will be very tough physically. Uh, especially from uh, control number three up to control number five, as you said, it's like 70 meters to climb in one piece. So that's that's going to be really tough. And then you have to change technique to this short legs, quite tricky, but a very small area. I don't think that the runners that they expect to end up there, because as you said, the embarkment area is quite big, and I think they actually thought that it would be in other parts parts of the map. So that's quite special. But let's look through um, the start list. As I said before, we've got them starting uh, in number order, uh, as were the results from two years ago in, in the Czech Republic. So the first uh, 14 teams finish in that order, and then we have uh, lower down, we have Sweden, and we have Lena Strand in for Tova Alexanderson. She was, uh, Alexanderson was initially meant to run the first leg. She is uh, the sprint champion from these competitions, but uh, she has an ankle injury, so we have uh, Lena Strand has come in to replace that. And then we have overall, we have 21 teams heading out into the, the hills, into the, the village here today. And um, that's not, I mean, not, not a huge field when there's, you know, you can have more than uh, one team per nation, then it's a, a lot more packed. Um, but of course, the, the women running on first leg will definitely be, be running together for, for quite a bit of the race. So what, what do you think about, about are the pressures of running on first leg? Well, it's very special because you everyone is still together and you have all the nations together and there are always some of the nations they of course can go a bit over pace because they see the others and they can take advantage of that so it's much more nervous on the first leg than it is on the second or third leg and it's very special I, for me it's always it feels as if it's the most nervous leg because if you run the last leg then you, it's much easier to focus on your own race. You have maybe one or two other runners and it's not as nervous. The situation is not as nervous as uh, this later, later on. Well, Anastasia, Anastasia Rudnaya will take it out for the Russians with uh, Celia Freeberg Klusner, uh, a stalwart in the Danish sprint relay team will go out first. And then uh, second in the sprint it's Judith Frieda who's going to lead out the Swiss team, the hot favourites for today's race. And Vida will surely have a great start on the first leg. Anna Nari from <laughs> Finland will lead her team out. And uh, we also have Denise Kosova, fifth place team from last time. She will begin that race, but the team are already in the counting down the seconds till this mixed sprint relay begins. And they are off. All the teams pick up their maps and head out into the terrain. They will get a first glimpse of what is waiting for them out here. And looks like the Finns are leading off 
all saying as a pack at the moment they will run they are running north out of this arena quite a long run out to the start kite and some of the leading uh, teams we have Judith Vida taking the lead there uh, we also have the Norwegian and the Russian teams doing well at the beginning and they will have already made some route choices with Anastasia Rudnaya choosing to go straight on most of the teams taking the right uh, hand route choice. They are, they do split up though to go to the first control. There are two different options, and here we can see some people have broken off to the right. They'll have most likely have the right forking, and some most of the ones gone this way. They will have the left forking. There's only two options here though, and we will follow them and see how they regroup at the end here. Some of them will have a tree just after they've come up the steps here. You can see it just to the left of picture. Meanwhile, some of the others realize they have to go up the steps and turn right before they get to that control. And you can see the people who've gone right um, around the fence, they've already got to that control beforehand. You can see uh, Charlotte Ward in that group as well. That's, and that's kind of a good uh, fork in there because uh, some of them were mistaken. They choose the wrong route choice and then they come... I mean, they, they follow the other runners to the on the longer route choice to their control, so that's good forking if you if you get tricked into choosing the wrong route choice there. Yes, and this is what happened to the the forkings to number one, and then again they're being split up to head out to control number two with a big group being forced left. Uh, these two controls are, are very very close together, but I think it depends on the it basically depends on which number one you have as to which way you're going to number two i think they're being split up here we've got Judith Vida. uh she's on the b forking and yeah all the ones on the b taking the right hand route but looks like anastasia rudnaya of russia heading up there as well uh, to get at the moment it's two difficult to see where they're going. The next place we should see them, we will have a pre-warning from control number three before they head up the hill and then we will see them at control number four. There is some route choices though for uh, control number number four, which we can talk about when we see the, the full route. But it There will be a left and a right possibility. Uh, if you choose the left one, you will directly head to the left from directly after the control and otherwise you have to go turn and go back and then around to the right side and it looks as if almost everyone is choosing the left it's unforked there so yeah they could f just follow but they, of course they don't know that it's unforked so. Yeah, it looks like everyone is heading to the left and they will go up the stairs around the road and keep climbing so there's about 50 meters of climb just over 50 meters of climb um, on this particular leg three to four and we actually uh, these are two and a half meter contours so we have to remember that let's just get a little uh, rundown of who was in the lead at control number three. We had Judith Vida go through there first with Rudnaya from Russia one second behind. Then is Alexanderson of Norway, uh, Klusner of Denmark and Charlotte Ward of Great Britain fifth. She's seven seconds behind. Then we have Poland, France, Italy, Ukraine, Austria, Czech Republic and Sweden. None of these there is just by the flags. Good job I can recognize my flag. That, that was the, the forking decisions at, on the early part of the course. And we have seen kind of a chain reaction here. No one ch uh, has chosen to go back and uh, run the right route choice, one to the right there. Um, well, I, I can imagine if if Judith had turned directly from the control, everyone ran mm -hmm. to the right. But uh, of course, uh, the left one is, it seems to be good. It's well, you. We you ran it with it. Simone, you tested yeah, it. Yeah, but it's hard to say. I think it's quite equal. We also, I also talked to the course setter and he thought it would be quite equal. So I think it's good to go to left. Yeah, well, there's a, um, interestingly, there's a camera placed on the track to the, the right hand route choice because I ran up there and there's a camera on the, the small track bend uh, to the north and east of control number four where if, if you went the right hand route choice, but and nobody's going that, that way. Uh, you did is pushing away from the other ones. And she that already is... already has a small gap there. 
Here we see who are the best hill climbers. And Judith Vida, who took second place in the sprint, she is doing very well leading up the group. Then we have Russia. Then we have Norway with Isaac. Then we have Denmark, Cecilia freeberg Klusner, And then fifth place is Charlotte Ward of Great Britain. Next. Ooh. That's the Ukraine. <laughs> Ukraine. France. They're taking France. Austria. Austria. <laughs> Italy, I think. As you can see, it's very <laughs> steep here. Uh, Czech Republic with uh, Kosovo on the first Poland, leg. Lena Strand. Aislinn Prendergast of uh, Australia in there as well. But this is Edith Vida, the first to punch the control number four after five minutes and 41 seconds of running. And she looks very good. Let's have a look at the gap. It is. Nine seconds, so she's pulled apart eight seconds on uh, the run up the hill. And then we have Norway with Alexanderson. We have Denmark with Klusner. 19 seconds behind is uh, Charlotte Ward for Great Britain. Katarina Zema for Ukraine. Mel Bevere from France is next. And if we take just a fight between Switzerland and Sweden, uh, we see that Lina Strand, she lost 23 seconds in this up in this uphill uh, compared to Judith Wieder. And um, we've actually, you can see some people have taken the different route choice. I saw Kosovo of the Czech, the Czech Republic. She took the different route choice uh, going to control number five. But most of the athletes heading straight up the hill uh, through this little cut uh, channel of grass and will make their way keep going up the hill. So there's another 25 meters of climb roughly to get to control number five. So back with the leader, this is Judith Frieda going through the now narrow and cobbled passageways between all these buildings, they're very, very small. And when you're running here at speed, it's really difficult to, to read the map at, at speed and uh, And here see we see everything. that the Judith Wider was, she chose to run over the open area there, the field, and uh, she got uh, for sure shorter distance to run. And I think that was a good decision. Yeah, I think that was as well. And pulling ahead now, but here we've got to see how they make it through all the different passageways and yes i imagine the gps is going to have a little bit of trouble with all the they really are very narrow and cobbled but i know they placed quite many antennas out there to make the signal a bit better <laughs> but then we'll see yeah it's a very very difficult area but this is how how close you have to read the map and you really have to completely mm -hmm. change tactic when and you get to she's this area. Quite, she's quite comfortable with uh, being alone there. As I said, it's less stressful situation. There's no risk that you follow someone else or someone else can disturb you in your orienteering. And uh, she, for sure, she knows that she is very good in orienteering by herself in sprint. She got that feedback from the, from the sprint last Sunday and she knows that in this group here, she should actually be the, the fastest runner. So we just had Rudnaya and Ward through, and we've also got uh, Alexanderson through. They're, they're rounding this corner to control number eight, which we've already seen Yudit Vida go through. And looks like she's pulled up more seconds on the route choice to control number five, because Rudnaya is 27 seconds down. And in third place, Charlotte Ward's caught up a couple of positions. But now they'll have another forking. Now, this there is a big group. As well. and it's a, everybody's yeah. everybody's it's a group's back together. Already. Yes, I think uh, Norway, uh, Alexanderson has dropped down a few places and Klusner is there as well. But now you can see this is the decisions being made. There, there is a forked control, though, after this control number eight. There are two options. Um, but this is how... Every, everybody else has... Don't forget to punch the control there. Yeah, yes, Aislin, don't forget. Um, OK, so we, here we can see which... Well, well, we won't. We will go back with uh, Judith Vida. She's going far too fast for the GPS to track to keep up and looking very, very solid. But now she will think about going down the hill. And there is, again, another little route choice. She's just punched control 10, and that's the lead over the rest of the field. So here there are, there are a couple of possibilities. 
um, but I think Vita taking the, the most sensible option. Yeah, it's for sure it's a good option. There are many like micro route choices also where Route Naya is at the moment. You can choose to take the stairs down there or to run around where you don't have stairs. Personally, I think it's better to run around because then you get the opportunity to read the map. Uh, it's not that good uh, when you run down the stairs. There's almost no, you have to be very careful and it's hard to read the map. So I think there it would be good to, as we saw Alexanderson doing it, there to run around. I and think she's uh, caught up a few seconds yeah, there, actually. Maybe it's not it's not faster uh, if you take it to this control, but uh, <laughs> if you ta if you are looking to the future and like to the no next control, it can be a bit uh, an advantage. Yeah, it can. You can use the uh, the flatter surface. You don't have to concentrate on mm -hmm. making all the stairs because obviously every every stair is uh, completely different. But everyone heading pretty much the same route choice down to control number 11, and they'll will drop uh, quite a lot of height at this point, going down a few steps. They aren't too bad though, and then round round the bend. And this is what. Um, is happening at this particular point with Judith Vida looking very good. I think the uh, GPS is quite inaccurate there where Vida is. I don't believe that she just jumped over the fence <laughs> there and uh, continued. So. No, you have to go um, down there. Yeah, they have shut down the, the path there or the street, so there's no possibility to go, go over there. It's a, in some way, it's it's a big surprise for me that the gap is so big already. I mean, from uh, Vida down to, let's say, there are only il 11 nations within a minute, mm. and that's not very much. And we have actually, we have Sweden, Lina Strand, 59 seconds behind on position 11. That's quite a big gap already, and uh, yeah. That's just, and as, as we know, half of that was taken out from just up the climbing, the hill, yeah. yeah. And uh, as we like experienced in earlier competitions, there's no, not very big uh, differences on the men, men's course usually. Um, and uh, one minute is, is a lot. So we are looking for Edith Vida into looking to get control number 12, and then we will see her come through the packed arena, to be honest. But it looks like uh, Charlotte Ward is next but they needed to make sure they actually went down the stairs and didn't cut around the corner in the out of bounds section because she's looks to be good going down the hill but we're looking now for Edith Vida to go back essentially back via the start point and then um, come round the corner She is. That's essentially the start control. So she will run back into the arena, and now the Swiss crowd at the end of that passageway will know she is coming. And then just a very easy section at the end of the course, but we can't even see anyone cl remotely close behind her. So she will round the corner, and she's about to go through a passage, and she comes into the arena, and the Swiss crowd are cheering and waving the flags because she's punching the control just before the arena passage and she's about to come up the hill on this grassy patch here she should just be appearing in the picture just now that's it and so she's only got essentially three four controls more to go on this course will make her way uphill and then there is no forking on this last bit of the course so she will find the first control on some play equipment. Then she will soon send out Florian Hovald on the second deck. Uh, very good sprint runner he uh, as well. It's a medal from uh, two years ago and uh, he performed very very well yesterday as well. So he is in good shape and I'm sure he likes this situation uh, being in the lead with uh, quite many seconds. Uh, just to take it a bit a bit more calm in the beginning. He has some time to think about the route choices. He doesn't have to chase anyone. Just focus on his own race and uh, keep it clean. 
So we've seen Austria pull up a lot of time and Great Britain into third place. We've also... We almost 53 seconds from uh, UD to Ursula Kana. And then we have uh, Charlotte Ward, Sigrid Alexanderson, Anastasia Rutnaya and Lina Strand in fifth position. But Vida has one more control to punch before she goes to hand over to Florian Herwald in the final stages of her leg. Judith Vida has done her job and she has done it brilliantly, stretching out the lead of about 53 seconds over the rest of the pack. She will hand over to the silver medalist from the middle distance who is now going to begin his part of this relay team and see what he can do. And now we had also Cecilia friberg klisner at the Arena Passage and she's 150 behind. OK, Klusner's dropped a lot of time in the middle part of the race summer because she was up with the leaders. So this is Austria and Ursula Kadam into second place. And she will send out Gernot Kerschbaum and we know, even if he missed the sprint final last Sunday, we know that he's actually in quite good shape physically. So, yeah, it's kind of, uh, it's not a big surprise that Ursula Kadam is, uh, is a good sprinter, but still Austria in second place. Surprise. Absolutely. And the changeover is made. And Kirschbaumer will have first look at his maps as he runs out. But uh, Lena Strand has uh, overtaken a few places to be the next to hand over. And she'll hand over to Emil Svensk. Next, we have Norway and Alexanderson handing over. Charlotte Ward hands over Ukraine. Russia have dropped a few places. And a big group there, and the gap is about 55 seconds. Uh, Ursula Kadan is behind uh, Switzerland. So, a big, big lead, but can Florent Hoval maintain it? And certainly for the rest of the teams, they're all very, very close together. And with the men tending to run at more similar times, then it could be a, still a lot of chopping and changing behind them. Mm, but they can also push each other to maybe push each other up the hill there. And uh, yeah, it will be interesting to see if Florian Hovell can uh, keep the pace by himself or if he he will invest some seconds in uh, clean card uh, map reading and uh, yeah. So Switzerland out in front with a little gap to Austria and then another small gap to uh, a very big group, including Sweden, Norway, Britain, Ukraine. And this is the GPS tracking at the moment with uh, Florian Hovald already on his way to control number two. Now the men have a slightly different uh, beginning to the course, but do they have forking? They have no forking at the beginning of the of their course so everybody is essentially going in um the same to the same controls but they won't know that and that's the key in general we can say there are not that many four kings in the course here that might be a bit surprising but uh, as we have seen it's split it up the field anyway Yep, so not too many problems at the beginning part of this course where it's flatter and then they will all begin the climb up to control number four. So we've already had Florian Hoald punch control number three. His time, total time of running is 18.25 with Kirschbaumer of Austria and Emil Svensk looking to be running together. They maybe just dropped um, Peter Hodkinson. we've not got all the runners there uh, with all the GPS trackings because that would be far too crowded. There are a lot of runners very, very close together who all came through the finish in similar times, but... We see that Florian Hovald chose the left route choice as well, which I think is good. This is a good one. We, it would be interesting to, <laughs> to see another route there by, by someone, but... Uh, Svensk also looks to be yeah. taking the same route choice and this is the comparison between the two routes. 
and yeah, it's, four meters in it. That's the short. It's the shorter one to the left. I'm sure he saw. He noticed that the, those four meters. <laughs> well, everybody now looks to be going the same way. Well, job uh, well performed, well executed there from uh, the silver medalist from these uh, European Championships already. Um, was absolutely delighted with her performance um, on return from having a baby. So good it, job. And it's a special. It was a special situation for her. I mean, she was the she took the second place on Sunday, but the gold medalist is not uh, participating. So she knew that she is the best sprinter in the field, and she is on the start deck, which is quite unusual. Um, and I think she had. Like that was the tactics from the Swiss team uh, by putting her on the first leg, try to open up a gap, and they managed it. And now they they will try everything to keep that gap as it is at the moment. Well, let's just uh, consider how strong the Swiss team is. Every single athlete in the Swiss team to had a podium position in the the sprint final. Mm. So they all finished in the top six. As I mean. That's pretty strong. <laughs> There's no other teams yeah, that are remotely like that. Nothing to like complain that. about. No, like that. not at all. Not at all. But that's punching control four after 21 minutes of running. But let's have a look back to control three and see what the gaps were. Uh, Florin Howald was a minute quicker than Emil Svensk with Kirschbaumer uh, there that as well. Emil Svensk, he picked nine seconds on Hovald to the first radio, so they're going in faster than Florian Hovald uh, in the lead. Well, that's uh, Emil Svensk, and then I think it's Austrian Kirschbaumer, then it's Peter Hawkinson from Great Britain. I can't even see what top that is. It's, uh, <laughs> the, it's the Russian top. Oh, yes, and then, pop -off. and then Italy doing well with Riccardo Scale on second leg. And now they can stretch out their, their legs no. after the tough uphill. It was 59 seconds at the first uh, TV control, and it was 1 minute and 8 seconds for uh, the Swedish team at the changeover. Now it's 55, so we can continue to pick some time there. So Emil Svensk of Sweden is running faster than Florian Hovald and surely dragging um, the rest around with him at this particular point. But it looks like he's taken a different route choice, though, to control number five. Oh, not quite. He's just too far ahead. Hovald choosing a different route choice uh, to Vida to get to control number six. And this is all about executing the very, very minor changes of, of direction, spotting all the little alleyways in these buildings that are very, very close and together and everything comes at you very quickly. It's interesting because Hovald has chosen the same beginning of the route choice as we saw you did video taking, but he didn't cut over the open area there, over the field. And Svensk, he chose another route choice, more he stayed down there and uh, more to the left. And we, it will be interesting to see if he if it was faster, the route choice Emil Svensk took there. Mm. Well, we'll I get mean, the next time I mean. check at control number eight. As you see, Hovald through these. these. This is how small all these little uh, alleyways are. Actually, it's all quite good as that, well. the, that the rain that it isn't, didn't get that slippery because there are some very narrow turn, turns uh, in this small place here and it would be very slippery and dangerous. I mean, that's pretty smooth through that control number eight after nearly 24 minutes of running in total. And that we saw a lot of people being hesitant there where they're going to the next control. Mm -hmm. Well, like Pete Hodkinson is doing. That's Italy and Italy. Norway. And, and that's in France. And it was, at the, la the last time it was 55 seconds. The so gap. So has he caught up any time? As you see, Peter Hawkins and Gunnar Kirschbaumer all heading to this control. And OK, let's see what the gap is now. And looks like it's been narrowed. Yeah, so now good. only so 43 seconds. Yeah, so he so continues. running well. 
He has, so far he was 25 seconds faster, so that's quite a difference. Okay. It's about the same as uh, we saw you did with on the first leg to, uh, to this point. Maybe she had some more seconds, but it's a good, uh, very good start uh, by Emil Svensson. Okay, with Cardo Scale from Italy looking very good, and uh, Peter Hodkinson has lost some time on and lost some places with some hesitations in this small area. And just stopping to check the map, check the correct route choice. This is control number 10 for Florian Hoald. And down the steps he goes to lose, to drop some more heights. Here we have Estonia and Timo Sills. I think. No, Kenny Kivikas. Again, some more hesitations, but they've both gone down the steps. To but I think it's it's more to just yeah stop if you're not sure about the route choice. It's better than to lose uh, five or ten seconds by choosing the wrong one. So we have a group all together here, Russia, Austria, Britain, Italy and Norway, losing a little bit of time, Norwegian um, Pedersley. So it's about, we can see here, it's about a minute. No, it's 30, no, 30 seconds, seconds, so sorry. he continues to mm. win time over Florian Ovald. So he went out with more than a minute, and now it's only th around 30 seconds. So it's a really, really good race by Emil Svensk. Very good. So well, far. So. Yep, so far. Still um, a lot of course to go, but most of the climb now is done. They're on their way And it will down. be interesting, I mean, if... if uh, Emil Svens can see Florian Hovell now when they come out. He, he for sure knows that he picked a lot of time and this will give him some extra energy. I'm quite sure about that. Yeah, he know, he will know the gap. That yeah, of course, he, he, he knew he that it was more than a minute and mm -hmm. now it, there's no way that it, this still is more than a minute and this will push him, this will really give him some extra energy. Okay, but waiting, this is Martin Hubman waiting in the arena. Lauren Hovald is still in the lead. Switzerland are still in the lead, but we have Emil Svensk and Sweden who are gaining some time, catching up the leaders, as it were. So they've they've still got a few more controls. They have a, a bit more running to do before reaching the arena compared to what the women were doing, but they are able to, the third leg men are able to start some warming up. So similar route choices down into control number 12 for the men, and it's still about 30 seconds is the gap. Svensk just crossing the main road and going down into control 12. Now they will enter an area where we didn't see the women. Here from control number 12. 13 and then they will go back to the spectator control and this is uh, again it's a forking here so if you have the C then you have to enter this small park and if you have D you can run around and take it from the back and the chasing group altogether looks like uh, the Czech Republic have caught up a lot there that is uh, Milos Nikodim on the second leg for them but still a big group of runners together. And they are all about maybe th another 30 seconds down. So can't tell here who has which forking. But the runners who are warming up in the arena will know that once they see their teammates pass in front of them, it will only be a couple of minutes before they have to change over and they will be on their way on their own course. They will not have many indications of, of what is happening. And now we see that Homel is going around to the right. I think there's a possibility to go left as Emil Svensk is doing it. And I think that the left one is actually a bit faster. So we'll see very soon if he can uh, 
take advantage of this route choice by Florian Hovland and if, it's re if it really is a bit faster. Did they have the same forking or different forking? I'm not really sure. I think they had the same. Okay, well, we will see what the difference is when I'm, they I'm get to the I'm quite sure that uh, Svensk has a better route choice there. Well, we know it was uh, 30 seconds about uh, before. And this will be very interesting. Well, Hovald is into the arena and can punch control 12. And we can see from our position, uh, we're high up in a school building. We can see that Emil Svensk is very, very yeah. closely behind. This isn't 30 seconds anymore. No, but we will get confirmation as they punch control number 12 that Florian Hovald is cheered through on this final final loop. And Svensk just punches. It's 24, 24. seconds, so he has caught up so some it, time. It's more than... F it's almost 45 seconds he caught up from the start. Well... Switzerland are the favourites for this race, but that's not to say that uh, that Sweden won't give them good competition. What a comeback by Miss Watson there for the Swedish team. What a comeback. But all attention now, of course, on our leaders, Florin Horvald, who will climb this hill. This is like a BMX cycle park, something little course, and will drop down this steep bank to the bottom. And there's not really much orienteering to do here as we see um, him punch the control 17. It will be interesting to see if uh, Martin Hoopman can turn the trend for Switzerland now. I mean, there's still, it's still quite a big gap. They, I, I'm quite sure that uh, Jonas Lamson won't see Martin Hoopman by running out. And, uh, there's a chance still to turn this, but there's also uh, a chance for the Swedish team to actually close that gap and uh, group together with Switzerland. Well, at the halfway point, Florin Hovald hands over to Martin Hubman with Switzerland, still in the lead, but a much smaller lead than they once had, and this is the reason why. It is Emil Svensk who could round the corner, punch the final control, and let's have a look at the gap. He is going to have narrowed it even further as he will hand over to Jonas Leanderson. So the gap is 24 seconds. So just catching up second by second, and we're going to see who is next to change over. There's Russia, but there are a few runners ahead, and it looks like Peter Hawkinson, Great Britain, will be the next to hand over. He will hand over to bronze medalist Chris Jones, but there's the Italian team directly behind who will hand over to Mattia De Bartoles. But Britain in third, Italy in fourth. We have Russia into fifth place, and Russia, the defending champions, handing over to orienteering legend Andre Kramov. Uh, Norway is in sixth, and Milos Nikodim is in seventh, handing over to uh, another great sprint orienteer, Wojtek Kral. And Austria, who were in the, the leading group for a while, Gerna Kirschbaumer, hands over into eighth position. So let's have a look at the GPS splits. And Lee Anderson has had a flying start. Is Possibly still 20 seconds behind Martin Hubman, and we have Chris Jones and Deborah Tollis. But still, he can't see Martin Hubman, so that's that's uh, I think in a little bit of an advantage for Hubman there. Uh, at the same time, as they have Sweden, I mean, Lamson, he knows that they. They, there's the possibility again they get some new fresh air there back uh, in the back uh, of Switzerland and I'm sure he will do everything to be able to continue. Look at this glance over to his right that's the mark of a good orienteer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he, he, he checked on the map where the next control will be and uh, he knew that it will be on the right side so he checked this for sure this little gate in the bushes there where he has to go through and then also if he can see the next control already and here actually I think that Leanderson when he just left the control he turned back which yeah uh, which isn't very very good so I think he lost some two or three seconds there but uh, no bigger mistake we didn't see that on this GPS but the two of them will have just passed each other and the two leading teams getting getting a little glance and when I Talking, when I'm talking about going back, I, I mean 
just where the number one is there on the map on the GPS there's uh, an opening and he took this one instead of heading north and uh, going a bit more direct as the others were doing. See that also Martin Uman is going to the left there. Yep, making the same uh, decisions to go and up the hill uh, to control Jan number four. Sonny will notice now that no one came back, so he will uh, for sure know that Uman took the left route choice there. And that was the handover to Leanderson, who already unrolling his map to get out onto the course. And we see that he chooses to take the same route choice as Martin Hohmann. So let's have a little look at what their times to control number three and Jonas Leanderson of Sweden is 24 seconds behind uh, Martin Huben and that's the same as was on the changeover. Uh, we have Christian Jones has lost a few seconds on the, the time as well of Martin Huben and uh, Ersteber of Norway is, uh, has climbed a few places but there's a big group there together. So let's have a look going up this hill. And we have Martin Hupman who is putting all his hill climbing techniques into practice. So we're missing a few runners in the third, essentially, chasing pack. So we've got Switzerland, a gap, Sweden, and a gap. And then there's a whole group of runners together. You can say that together with Chris Jones, we also have uh, Oysen Kohl, Östebö, and uh, Andre Kramov. And uh, there's also Wojtek Kral. And some nine seconds behind it is also Robert Mell for Austria. But here is Martin Hubmann and the leading Swiss team heading up the steps and rounding the corner. He was looking for control number four and we will get another time check and we will see who uh, who's the fastest at running up hills. Now we might see if uh, Jonas Andersson has him in sight already when he comes around the corner. No, that's not the case. Taking a while of it there, not looking quite as efficient up the stairs. And now this this route choice has split the pack a little bit more mm -hmm. to control number five. I uh, don't think it's probably not the now biggest. Now they see each other. <laughs> now they can get a sense of what the gap is. And it was at control number three, it was 24 seconds. Let's see what's happened now. I think Lee Anderson has lost a little bit of time. This is Chris Jones though, climbing up a hill ahead of Ersterberg and the Wojtek Kral is up there as well as Kramov there in the red top for Russia. I can tell you it's 28 seconds now so uh, Hoopman was four seconds faster in the climbing in the first part of the climbing and we also know that you see on the GPS here it's not in the picture but they split up again and uh, Leanderson is having for the route choice Judith Wider was taking on the first leg and uh, Martin Hoopman is going the yeah, the route choice Emil Svensk chose uh, on the second leg. So it's another 30 seconds back to the chasing group, which is headed up by Chris Jones. Roger Kral has caught up uh, a few places. Uh, and we saw Ersterberg taking the different route choice here. Let's see how this pays off as they head into the very narrow and tricky section. And uh, we see that uh, Leanderson is doing it better than uh, Florian Howald on the second leg because he's cutting up there to the over the field. And uh, I think that's better. If you choose that route choice, you have to go up there. Yeah, rather than Leanderson staying along the, yeah. the track and then heading up yeah, the passageway. And here is Leanderson punching control number five. And he will keep going now. There's not any forking until they get to control number nine. And here at control number six is our leader, Martin Hoopman. 
looking around him a lot just to check he doesn't miss any of the passages but not having too many issues on his way. Already punched control number seven, and now we'll get a new time check as he rounds the corner to find control number eight. Look, he's already deciding which way to go to number nine, where there is some forking here. He will have the same forking as um, Ersteberg, but not as Leanderson. So Martin Hoodman has punched control number eight in a time of 39.49. The gap, it was to uh, Sweden, it was 28 seconds. And at control number eight, let's wait and see whether he's lost any time on the, well, first of all, the route choice and then through the narrow passageways. And it is 35 seconds. So he's dropping back compared to Switzerland and a little cheer in the arena as the crowd registered that it's not going to be like it was on leg two with Emil Svensk gradually catching up. Oh, and it's the Italian runner, it's Erbatolis. And the third group with Chris Jones in the lead looks like he's broken away from the runners who were all behind him. Uh, Wojciech Kral of the Czech Republic. Uh, Kramov of Russia and Ersterberg of Norway. So Chris Jones seems to have broken away from that group from fourth to sixth, but not catching up any time on the lead, though. In fact, he's losing time on the lead of Martin Hoopman. But back to the GPS, and this is the lead of Switzerland. We see that uh, Hoopman he managed to turn the trend here a little bit. I think it's more than 35 seconds now. But now we see that Leanderson is going around. Uh, that's what I mentioned at the first leg. I think that's smart because then you can read in the next control or even the next controls. Uh, you have a smoother running there. And instead of choosing the stairs, you can just focus on plain running. You can indeed, and more opportunities to read the map. Though everybody is taking the same route choice we've seen down into Control 11. We thought there was a possibility on Control 11 to go uh, a western of most routes, but there is a lot of um, stairs there as well. So we're waiting for Finland and Yoni Hovikalio. There is a Big gap it's from uh, the gap of third, 50 seconds, sorry, from eighth to ninth. And it looks like uh, Andrew Blanes from Spain taking it into 10th position. But this is the uh, chasing group of fourth place to now looks like seventh place with the Italian. Again, they meet there for a short while. And another opportunity to assess the uh, the gap that is... I, I wonder if uh, Martin Hoopman is noticing that he turned uh, like the, the trend a little bit, that uh, the gap actually is getting a bit bigger again. Will he have time to think about that? Well, I <laughs> think that he will actually... That's that's very hard to avoid. I think uh, he will he will for sure see him and he will get the, this uh, thinking in his mind. Uh, I'm sure he doesn't want to think about it, so he will he will really fast go back on map reading. But that's something that just pops up and uh, it's very hard to shut it down. We see that there they. A small micro route choice they took differently. Uh, Martin Hoopman was going down the stairs there, and uh, Jonas Leanderson was rounding the green area there, and I think that was smart by Leanderson. And I'm, I'm not sure I, uh, about Hoopman's route choice there. He has which he has the left control, the westerly control. There's the a possibility two. to back out directly yeah. again, and I think that's actually a little bit better, as Leanderson is doing it now. But Leanderson has the different control. Mm -hmm. But still, I think, uh, I mean, they have to go to the same point there just before, uh, and then they have to split up very shortly. 
uh, before the control, and uh, I think it's better the route choice Leanderson has chosen. But this looks like Wojciech Kral in fourth place has broken a little bit away from Ersteber of Norway and Kramov of Russia. Uh, we also are seeing the Austrian in there as well. Uh, thank you. And we see that Hoopman is taking the same route choice as Florian Howald in the second leg. And we know that that's, it wasn't really as fast as uh, the route choice Emil Svensk was taking. And also Chris Jones, he did a small mistake there, running in too early. Uh, he actually had, had see, to climb that? some stairs when there before the he part, should turn to the right. The split, and uh, let's see if Leanderson is choosing another route choice, uh, the same as Emil Svensk was taking on the second leg. So the fourth leg runners are waiting in the arena, waiting for their runners to come through. And yet we are seeing Martin Hoopman into the arena. He's only got a very, very short amount of running left to go. But it's good for the Swiss crowd seeing their runners in the lead at this particular point. And Martin Hoopman has broken away. The gap has got bigger to Sweden. But it's all down, it will come down to the last leg as usual. But let's have a look at the gap. We will get an indication. Uh, it says more than 30 seconds, so we'll have to wait a little bit. There's Carolyn Olsen getting ready. Uh, she will take over from Jonas Janssen for Team Sweden. Here is Jonas Leanderson for Sweden. He will punch this control on the sculpture and the gap now is 46 seconds. So he has lost some more time on the lead of Switzerland. 46 seconds is the gap. That is what Carolyn Olsen will have to try and catch up on Elena Roos if she's able to... Uh, catch up a place. We've also seen Chris Jones go through. He's a minute and eight seconds off the lead, but still in a solid first, third place. Can't see fourth at the moment. He will hand over to Alice Leake. But Leanderson going through and he takes a different yeah. route choice. There's a gap in the fence he here. Will lose two or three seconds there. You should turn back and take the open and the uh, But Martin Hoopman, he has done his job of hand over to the She is from the area, it is Erna Roos, and um, she will want to... Oh, that is allowed. <laughs> there it is, actually. Miss the gap in the fence. Yeah, and now it's, I mean, it's a lot of pressure on uh, Elena Roos. She is from here, all the media is focusing on her uh, before these championships. Uh, she wasn't satisfied at all with her sprint race, so there's not only pressure from outside, it's also from uh, herself. And uh, I mean, Caroline Olsson, she doesn't have anything to lose uh, in this situation. It seems quite okay if she looks back and she knows that she has a good uh, shape. But it will be interesting. It's very, it's very hard to predict who's uh, the faster runner of those two. Well, Chris Jones will hand over to Alice Leak. It's her first time uh, in a GB vest for the sprint relay team. And with a 31st place in the sprint, she will um, have to hold it out with some a lot of other runners chasing behind her in the fourth spot at the moment. And in fourth spot, Ursper has suddenly managed to creep ahead of the rest of the field. And he will hand over to uh, Andrina Benjaminsen, who will bring the Russians home, bring the Norwegians home. But we have Russia and Austria with Robin Mull just crossing ahead of Andrei Kramov. Kramov will hand over to Galina Vinogradova. And we have handing over to Laura Ramstein for Austria. We also have Czech Republic with Jana Knapova on the last leg. So that was four teams, I think, very close together. So back out to the GPS trackings for the final leg. 
and the women here did have some forking to the first control and the second control and then everyone will head up the hill and we will catch up with them again at control number four. Now we see that uh, they take different route choices. Karin Olsen uh, chooses to go to the right there as, and we have seen uh, Elena Rose going more to the left. I think that very much depends on which uh, route, which yeah. first control you have. So uh, Yoni Hervikalio from Finland is the next to hand over, and he will hand over to Anna Hadia. So this is the 10th place uh, for the Finns at the moment. Andrew Blan is from Spain having a good run, bringing the Spanish team up a couple of places, but Anna Hatia will head out. It's a short way to run for, before we actually get to the start control, but back to some of the tracking here. No problems for Elena Rose uh, so far. She's also choosing the left route choice there. I don't think we've seen anyone taking the right there. Um, so far. And the gap seems to be a bit bigger, maybe. It's a half a minute there, the tail. And Alice Leek possibly catching some seconds on Carolyn Olsen. The gap Olsen. is actually one minute now. And uh, Alice Leek is one minute and ten seconds behind. So a good start for Alice Leek. Yep, she's caught up seven seconds on the first section. So Carolyn Olsen needs to be faster than Elena Roos by a minute if she's to uh, take uh, the win, if she's to deny well, Switzerland I the win. I won't make any uh, predictions anymore. I, <laughs> I already said that the race is over uh, in the middle <laughs> uh, yesterday, so everything can happen. But for sure it needs a mistake uh, by Elena Roos if... Uh, if uh, Kanlin Olsen should, or even Alice Leek should get a chance to take the, the gold medal away from Switzerland. Well, here's the Ticino orientate. Elena Roos making her way up the steps, has a flying start. She, there's a, she's got a lot of pressure put on herself. She really, really wasn't happy with her sixth place. She's, it seems to be a serial, serial sixth place, sixth place after sixth place. But, and it was another one for Elena Roos, but I think she wasn't disappointed about the sixth place. It was more that she, she lost a lot of time with the route choice in the beginning of the course, and she was really disappointed, like more over her run than over the result, I think. So for her personally, I think it's very important to perform well today. Also, if we look into the future, to the long distance, and uh, or, or the relay, even, uh, it will help her a lot. So after 53 minutes of running, it's Switzerland's Elena Roos in the lead and still looking a solid lead for the home favourites. And I think a good route choice up here as well. Yeah, she's taking the route choice, we, so you did, you did video taking, but... Uh, Martin Hoopman proved us that it is actually some seconds faster to stay down there. So, uh, yeah, there's a no possibility to catch some seconds. But this is a strong runner to have on the final leg and is prov has proved strong going up this hill. We should see uh, Alice Leek shortly come into picture behind her. There she is. The uh, Athlete based in Leeds, race in Yorkshire at the moment. And she will most probably take the same route choice because her head turned into that direction. <laughs> so the gap is a minute and one second. So pretty much the same as we saw at control number three. And Alice just being a little bit hesitant mm, into... She looks a bit tired here. She does look a bit tired. I think she's pushed it quite hard at the beginning of this race. 
She's not choosing, uh, she didn't choose the cotton area there in the grass. And Alice has lost, has she and lost the, any on time? The, on the GPS yeah, we see that uh, minutes, Elena Ruos was doing the same as uh, Florian Howald on the second leg. She didn't cut over this open area, so there's a chance for Karin Olsson to pick some seconds, actually. Oh, Alice is looking, struggling at this point. She's already climbed 50 meters, got another 25 to go to get to control number five, and I think was you saw yeah, how much she, uh, gap maybe, she caught up at the beginning. And maybe then she tries to, I mean, it's, it's it's tough for her to catch uh, Kalle Nolson, so maybe she tries to save it for for like safety's third position. And she has a lot of time left uh, compared with Jana Knapova. She was actually the one, uh, the first one I've seen going to the right there from control number three to control number four. And then we also have Austria there chasing. Well, yeah, Knapova has punched this control number four. You just saw her mm -hmm. go out the other way, and now uh, the Austrian is following her. Now we Rammstein. You can also say that uh, also Karin Olsson didn't cut over the field there. Okay, we're looking for Elena Roos to round this corner. She will punch control number eight, having made it through the narrow, narrow passageways. Just being extra careful. She knows she doesn't need to make, she doesn't want to make any mistakes because she's got such a healthy lead. She needs to play it safe and make, mm -hmm. and you know, rely on some good running. But further back in the field, this is Spain and Italy. Here we have Alice Leak again. I think she will be happy that she's on the top now. I mean, now it's uh, a lot of downhill and you can recover a little bit. Um, but she takes it very, very carefully here. Yep, I, but no hesitation at the control itself. Caroline Olsen punching control number six. And I think she's losing more time on Switzerland at the moment. She, number seven is just around the corner there, just out of shot. And then she'll round this corner to take number eight. It was eight and one get minute check. and one second at the... Yeah, at the second TV control, or at the yeah, the one after the uphill. And Let's now see. one minute and four. So losing a few seconds each time, not much, but certainly mm, not but gaining. She, she would need to really pick some time there. Yes, and she's not managed to do that. So the lead of Switzerland is looking very good at the moment, with some of the most difficult parts of the course now done. We're looking for Alice Leake to round this corner. This is control number six. And we can say that uh, Alice Leake, she, she had almost one minute uh, compared to Jana Knapova in fourth position and that's the GPS comparison between Knapova and Roos. She's the only one to have taken so the right route choice. Now we will get uh, an answer to the question here. Which is faster? No, oh, well, we, we won't. won't. <laughs> As Alice Leek, she's rounding this corner. This is control number eight. And let's have a look at the gap. Well, she is two minutes and 10 seconds behind, but I think we need to think more importantly, where is fourth place? And here is Austrian and Laura Rammstein running together with uh, Knapova and with uh, Benjaminson. And this is fourth, fifth and sixth. Can they catch up uh, on Alice Leek in third place? And I can just solve the puzzle about the route choice. It was quite much faster to go to the left. So everyone has been taking the correct route choice. Now let's have a look at the gap down to Everybody fourth place. Except for Knapova. And it is 33 seconds down between third and fourth. So the group running there together have 33 seconds. This is interesting. To, to Actually, a, we, a see, bronze medal. we see the first runners now taking the right, uh, the, the route choice to the right, and both of them <laughs> are in the leading group, at, or like uh, the two leaders at the moment. So uh, when you tested this one, you didn't even think this was no, a route choice because of because, because the of the stairs. Steps. Yeah, the stairs downhill they really slow you down, and uh, to the left you can actually run quite smoothly. Of course, you have uh, stairs there as well, but you can see even on the map that the steps are a bit like further apart. So you, 
run ability is a bit better there. Well, Britain's Alice Leek is in a good third place, and this is control number 10. She's punching there. She th was, at the last time check, 33 seconds ahead of fourth place. Mm, but she almost lost half a minute. So this will be interesting. It will be very tight, I think. I think it will be very, very tight for the bronze medal, which we guessed would be wide open. Mm, also, she is alone, and there's a group chasing behind. Yeah, will be interesting. It will be interesting to see if Alice Lee can hold off the advancing uh, trio of Norway, of the and Czech Republic and of Austria. See Benjaminsen is backing out there and... No, is it Knappova? It's Knappova backing out. No, it's Benjaminsen backing and it's Knappova going the same route choice as Alice Lee. Which he did think was the fastest. This oh, yeah. oh some sort of shoulder injury there for Newman. Oh, oh yeah, what happened there? Another injured runner. Yeah, well, injuries have played. Um, I mean, mostly the Swedish team already this championship with uh, Alexanderson having to drop out of the relay team. But this is the leader. This is Elena Rus. Yeah. She's coming through the arena passage, and it is looking very good for Switzerland. Surely yeah, there's, there's, here, there's, there's, no, there's, there's nothing no. can ri basically go wrong unless she miss punches. Yeah. Let, let's <laughs> let's calm down a little bit, but there's no technical challenge no, left. There's no uh, technical challenge. You have to jump over a control or do some other stupid thing, but this looks very good for the Swiss team. It looks incredibly good for the Swiss team who had, who had over a minute lead on the rest of the field at last asking. And also there we had the her view, like her eyes, turning to the right, to the next control. Already. And I think Alice made a mistake into control 11, going down the slope, the slope and having to go back up instead of going down the steps. Oh. Tense times for the bronze medal, but out here in the lead, it is Switzerland and just executing the final few controls. Yeah, and now I really will lean out the window and say that this is the, <laughs> the title for Switzerland. It is the favourites on a home soil and the local runner, Elena Roos, as we see Caroline Olsen just punch the spectator control to enter the arena. This is going to be a masterclass from the Swiss athletes, and they're all getting ready to welcome their final leg runner, Eleanor Roos, into the final control. Here we go, she punches the final control with many seconds to spare, so they can all race up the final finish together. Switzerland are into the finish on the sprint relay on home ground. And sadly, no pain for home man there. <laughs> I think a lot of pain for Ellen Bruce, who will be... Oh, my goodness, she's given that her all. But let's see the drama for the bronze medal very soon. Because I think there's... Uh, yep. The silver medal she seems to be quite safe for I Team Sweden. Yep. I think she wants to read out her uh, sport event first. Yes. There she knows she what's is. happened with disqualifications see, already. A little mistake, but only a few seconds there. And this is the battle for third. I and think a mistake from Alice Lake means there's three or even four runners close together. We've not got Laura Ramstein of Austria there, who was with the group. So it's going to be a burn up at the end for the bronze medal. Let's take Sweden to the finish first. So these are the runners uh, battling for bronze, but into the silver. It is Switzerland and Caroline Olsen. Sweden. Sweden, sorry, Sweden. They sound similar, OK? Sweden and uh, Caroline Olsen can cross the line to take their nation into second place. And that's a minute and 12 seconds behind, so losing some time. But we are looking for the bronze medal, and it is Norway in the lead, followed by Czech Republic, followed by Austria, followed by Great Britain going through the arena passage. And uh, as I can see here, Norway looks really, really strong. 
She's pushing hard up the hill here. Andrina Benjaminson of Norway is in third place with three runners close behind. It is Knappovert from the Czech Republic. Uh, it is Rammstein from Austria and Alice Leek of Great Britain in seventh. So this is the final push for the bronze medal for Norwegian. She's uh, just fallen. She wasn't prepared at all. She goes oh, back. checking to oh, off. That wasn't good. She might have lost the medal there. I think it looks really good for Norway. Yeah, I mean, she, she was just chasing and uh, thought that her chances uh, by just doing what uh, Norway is doing. But at the same time, she wasn't consequent in it. She, she should just have followed uh, Norway there. Yeah, but just checking even checking. even if she would do a small mistake, she should just follow to get in like get in contact and then stay with her and try to just uh, overtake her in the in the running. Czech Republic in four, Austria in uh, fifth, and we should see rounding the corner now the Norwegian Benjaminsen. Checking her map for some reason as she punches the air to greet her teammates on the line. And that is a bronze medal for the Norwegian team. That's a great performance from their quartet. She the was Czech very Republic eager to get the sport fourth. and uh, break there. And we have Austria into fifth and soon to cross the line. We have Alice Leek of Great Britain. She had the change over into third, but looking in a lot of pain there, uh, crosses the line into sixth place. So we will have uh, Denmark as well to the finish. And Maya Alm, too much for her to do on the final leg. We've seen they some, some great... They much on the first leg. It's over, it was almost two minutes, and it's a bit the same for Team Sweden. They lost one minute and the eight second on the first leg, and in the finish there... Yeah. We've seen my Al make some great comebacks on still. the final leg, but that was too much for her no, to but do. I mean, Team Sweden, they, are, they lost from after the first leg. They only lost four seconds uh, to the finish. So really the difference today was Judith Wieder against uh, Lina Strand, I think. Yeah. So what would it have been if uh, Tove Alexanderson wasn't injured? We will we will never know. It's, it's hard to say. Sports. Even Tove can do mistakes, as Even we know from yesterday. But do. still, it's uh, of course, it's the strongest runner out. And uh, yeah, another runner in, then it's you lose some time. There, for sure, there's some seconds uh, Tove could have saved, maybe. So Anna Hatia from Finland is the next to make it to the finish. Pulled up, uh, I think, a place, one place into ninth there for the Finnish team. Straightforward, mm -hmm. especially at the beginning at the in the winners, it was fairly straightforward. The, the leading few teams, two teams. Mm -hmm. uh, it was. Uh, we saw that uh, actually the tactics of the Swiss team was quite good. They opened the gap and they could uh, keep the gap open all the time. Even if it looked uh, very good for Sweden after the second leg, they they were very close to to catch Team Switzerland again. But in the end. Uh, it was it was really the difference uh, they Switzerland made on the first leg, and here we have uh, the comparison from the last leg. And these are the the top three teams. These are the route choices. Mm -hmm. Switzerland and Sweden out. And I think in the Switzerland lead. and Sweden they had almost the same route choices and all the uh, longer legs at least. Same to number four, I think same to number five. Same from 10 to 11, we see that uh, Andrina Benjaminsen was going to the right. Which is a bit, little bit slower. Yeah, at least uh, the comparison between Elena Roos and Jana Knapova, uh, Jana Knapova lost some time. Oh, but so for, I think, I think for Benjaminsen it was more about 
Uh, this doesn't show the battle catch. for, for, yeah, for exactly. third place. This she had not a, <laughs> not a battle, the battle to fight, uh, not for the first, not for the gold medal, it was for the bronze medal. But it's interesting that we see that uh, both uh, Elena Ruiz and Camille Trixel took uh, the route choice to the right there. And I think Carly Lawson cutting uh, through the green, which is possible. So Martina Benjamin going to the right there. Filling up some seconds and then just had the uh, legs. I think we saw Alice Leek make a little mistake into 11, nearly going going up to the out of bounds area and then having to double back. But we'll have to confirm that. But she looked really tired already after seven, eight minutes, Alice Leek, and I, I have a hard time uh, thinking about her defending the third place against uh, Team Norway. Yep. She dropped a lot, uh, quite a few places in the last loop and, and a few seconds as well. But it's all cheers for the home team, the home nation, who took a very impressive win with uh, great running on from all the teams. There's another there. And this, what a relief it uh, for sure is for Elena Ruas after the run last Sunday, which wasn't very good uh, in her opinion. And now she has a good result from this sprint relay and this uh, takes away some pressure for the coming uh, races for her. What races will she still have to do? I'm, not sure. I'm, I'm quite sure she will run the relay, but I'm not, not totally sure about the, lo the long distance. But the winning Swiss team who Judith Vida pulled them out to a great lead that was Diminished somewhat by Emma Svensk on second leg, um, but pretty solid performance all round from their team. And this was the final loop. No real orienteering difficulties here in this bit, just a chance for um, the spectators who have all been doing the Swiss Championships today to uh, cheer on their national team. And scenes as the four runners join together on the final straight to pick up some flags and cross the line. That, uh Club mates in Sweden, Judith Wider and uh, Lina Strand. No, yeah, it is. And that's the appreciation of what great orienteers can appreciate great races, even if they are rival teams. Stay tuned for uh, the flower ceremony, which is coming up in a couple of minutes. But the winning teams, I think, are just being interviewed in the arena to the expectant Swiss crowd. Well, this was the battle for third place, and all the runners very tightly together, but I think now you can see the speed of everybody through the final section and from here it was uh, it was simply running and we also see the hesitation there by Benjaminsen but Knappua wasn't able to uh, take advantage of it but she uh, already uh, when they came here to the arena uh, Andrina Benjaminsen she looked very very strong and it's yeah, you could al almost see that she really tried to, to like shock the other girls in the in the group and uh, get away from the others and just, 
yeah. Well, Make when, the difference mentally. Well, when you're running in, in that group together, you can play off what everybody else is doing and kind of know how hard to push it. Uh, but of course, they wouldn't know they were catching um, Alice Leak at that point. But when they, they saw her, they would have made a, a mental calculation. OK, now it's now it's the fight for the bronze. This is I, who we need to overtake. I think already when they started, they had in their mind that yeah. there is a chance because in, in, in the usual race, they yeah they are faster than Alice Leak and uh, then they know okay may, there might be a mistake uh, we still are in the game for the bronze medal and uh, as, as soon as they as they caught uh, Alice I'm, I'm sure uh, like the the game in the in the group started with you try to run away from the others and and just and just play it out what you have to to yeah almost destroy the others mentally yes it becomes a, a game of outwitting everybody else mm -hmm. and um, out, out playing them. But you don't want on a on a relay like this. Well, we saw some people taking different route choices on purpose to see if they could get a few seconds advantage. And, and some people would also prefer to, to stick with the pack to make sure they don't lose any time. See. So the winners from yesterday, it's Marika Taini. She's out some there to, yeah, yeah. to move. Uh, so I have uh, Tumi Alexanderson and Kat Taylor there, and Ula Lundanes talking to the winner from today, Judith Wieder. So the flowers, no, the medal ceremonies later on. Yeah, I uh, was a bit concerned that they had to build a ramp to get up the, uh, the athletes with a wheelchair, but it seems that they had some other help there. <laughs> Yeah, there was some hot cakes set in that one um, the other day. big result for the Norwegians who are not known as a, a great sprinting nation. Yeah, but they have shown in some uh, sprint relays that they they have the power to be up there. And now there are some uh, very strong young girls coming up. Uh, we've seen many very young runners in the sprint uh, by Team Norway and that's for sure something for the future. But uh, at the same time, Boisling Kval may, may, might not be in the team for many more years, uh, but that, that we thought already two, two <laughs> years ago. So. And uh, Andre Kranov is still with, uh, in, in the competitions, and Valentin Novikov proved us yesterday that you can go on until you're 43. So, uh, yeah, Team Norway is always, uh, I don't know, they, they, still, they always manage to be good in, in relays, even if they might not have the best results. I mean, Oysten Kval has some really good individual results, but they are already some years ago. And uh, But the relay always works for them. I think a phone home and some congratulations in order detailing the race. But or, it is or, or they order a pizza to celebrate. <laughs> <the money. laughs> but I think she needs to say goodbye because this is about time for the flower ceremony. And the Swiss team have got to get themselves in order. They're due up on the stage now. So the flower ceremony will take place before the results are made official later on today. But we will start out with the third place team with a great last sprint on the final leg. It is the team of Sigrid Alexanderson, Trond Einar Moon Pedersley, Özdenkval Özdebert, and Andrina Benjaminsson of Norway. Yeah, it was, uh, we've seen very solid races by all four of them. Uh, it was not like Team Sweden, where we had uh, Emil Svensk like, being catching a lot of time. It's, it's, it was very, very stable race by all of them. In the second place, 
And a silver now we will turn team. to the second place Seconda team. Classificata e medaglia d'argento. The team of Sweden. Team Sweden, and we have Lina Strand, Emil Svens, Jonas Janssen, and Karin Olsen. And here we have, uh, for sure, we have Emil Svens with a very, very good performance today. But otherwise, I mean, all the others did a good job. Um, Lina Strand lost a lot of time in, on the first leg, but everyone else did as well. So I'm, I'm sure she did uh, quite a good race technically, uh, but just the gap to you did with her is maybe physically a bit too big at the moment. Uh, and uh, we had good races by Jonas Nandesson and Karin uh, Olsson as well there. But they are working the crowd. And the first place, the winners of today's mixed sprint relay, it is the team from Switzerland. Judith Fida with a very strong first leg. Then we had Florian Hovald, Martin Hupman, and Elena Roos. See, he got a blue eye there. I don't know if he was in, in a fight uh, out in the course. Uh, yeah, here, of course, we have to highlight uh, Judith Wider's performance today. Very strong, even if he, for sure, I mean, she's the, she was the fastest uh, runner that we know already beforehand, but still, she she had to run away. It's not easy to run away in a group. Maybe it was good for her European that it was so much uphill in the beginning because she seems to be uh, better physically than the others uh, on this leg. And then we had uh, good performances by those two guys there in the middle, Florian Hovald and Martin Hoopman, and then a very strong performance again by Elena Roos. Well, there will be a, a little bit of a, a party tonight. There's a rest day tomorrow, so you know. <laughs> well, not, not the biggest party will be saved for the end of the end of the championships, of course. So those were the top three from today's mixed sprint relay. Third place Norway, second place Sweden, and first place Switzerland. So we will leave you with some highlights pictures from today's race. So, uh, we have a little rest tomorrow on our rest day and then we will be back for the relay on whenever two days time is. Saturday. I've, I've forgotten what day it is. On Saturday. But from myself and from Jonas, it is goodbye. Brava, brava.